Well, hello there, my name is Vladimir, this is Tanali from the band KLS. Oh, I'm not wearing that shirt, I should... <laughs> okay, hi, I'm Tanali. And today we're checking out Tanali's live setup, which is the iPad Focusrite iTrack Bias FX yeah. setup. Yes. Okay, I've been playing this system now about two years, and the reason why I use this is because it's it's quite fun to use. <laughs> it's not the best one. I'm I'm still the still like more more to play with decent power amp and head and cabinet and everything like that. But it's easy to use and uh, it's it's pretty lightweight. Okay, I have an uh, iPad Air iPad Air 2 and uh, Focusrite iTrack Duck is the sound card for that mm. and that's pretty much all <laughs> all the stuff <laughs> here i'm using also clorox uh, stereo di box which is all mounted for this for this pedal board so uh, every time when i go to concert i need only two microphone cables so it's quite clear setup mm. and you have a foot switch somewhere as yeah, well yeah i used the <clears throat> Positive Grids BT4. It's the same company that made this bias effects. And it's a Bluetooth. <laughs> it's a Bluetooth. Uh, what is this controller? So I, I'm still waiting that day that some kid will, <laughs> will hack hackerize it by by this <laughs> mobile phone. <laughs> but yeah, it's working quite good so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what's your signal chain here? Um, it's, it's, it's also quite simple. Oh, cable, guitar, cable, <laughs> and the and the eye, eye track sound card, and uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and live from there. You uh, right now we're plugged in from the eye track dock to the Universal Audio. What's that? Apollo Twin. I'm forgetting stuff as well. But live you go to the DI box and yeah. from there to front of house. Yeah. Yes. And we are playing with in-ear in -ear monitoring system, so I don't need any cabinets or amplifier for the for the gigs. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, have you found this setup reliable? Yeah. Only once it had failed and then it was... Uh, the problem was the bad update with the system. Ah, so, okay. But um, so far, I've, I've been playing this like two years now. About uh, how much? 40, 50 concerts. No, no problem so far. Nice. Yeah. Uh, recently, I actually went to Tanali's band concert where we shot some footage when Tanali was setting setting up everything uh, during the sound check and during the gig itself. Let's enjoy a few of those clips now.
And we're back. Let's check out the signal chain you've come up with. So this is bias effects app. I know there's a few more bias pedal and maybe something yeah, else. Bias amp. Yeah. I'm all <clears throat> in live situation. I use only bias effects, but when I if if I want to do something specific for the amp, then I use bias amp. Mm. I can show you how it how it done. This is my main heavy distorted sound. And it might sound a little bit muddy now in the studio monitors, but uh, this is for the live situation. And uh, I'm the rhythm guitar player in the band, so every time when the other player plays some metal melodies, and mm. I'm the rhythm guitar player, I need that, that sound to be like really, uh, really wide and big, so the sound engineer can raise the volume and without blowing up everyone's ears. Mm. So it's so <laughs> this is the. This is the main sound. So basically I have a two rectifier, triple rectifier amp here. I have a, with different mics. In the left channel I have triple rectifier with SM57 and C414 for the right one. So it's panned left and right? Yeah. And it's quite simple setup. There's only gate and the two amplifier for left and right and EQ, which mostly uh, it's a low and high cut. And then a little reverb. Uh, okay, are there any other sounds you use? I think you had a clean sound at some point. Yeah, I mostly use the uh, <clears throat> clean sound with tremolo. And it's <laughs> if if the if the distorted sound is simple, this isn't. <laughs> and I don't know why because. Uh, I created this sound like two years ago when I just playing around with the different uh, different amps and uh, I'm using Ryan Bruce's amp match from uh, Mark 5 Mesa Mark 5 and the Tweet Deluxe which is like Fender amp I guess <laughs> I'm not so sure yes it is <laughs> yeah and lots of pedals here and uh, they are just working quite well. Mm. I don't know why I put these all pedals here, but every time when I try to make new clean sound, I always come back to this one because it's it's just better. <laughs> Here's the clean sound without tremolo. So it's it's breaking up. Just a little bit. I yeah, think. a little bit. It's because the treble boost. Oh, nice. So when you are playing in a real, <coughs> really loud band, so it gives you more clarity in the sound, and it helps you to get through the mix. I could also use just the Tweed Deluxe or. Mark 5 clean sound, but I want to give some uh, options for the sound engineer so he could pick one his favorite sound <laughs> from the channel <laughs> and use that only. Uh, so, what's happening in this signal chain? There's the gate, boost, compressor. Yeah, gate, boot, compressor, and then the splitter for the two amps, left and right, then EQ, delay, and reverb. And the reason why I like this bias effects is because it's so simple to use. Mm. You see what <laughs> what you're doing. If you just want to want to drag this treble boost after the amplifiers, you'll just drag it <laughs> drag it to the <laughs> something you cannot do with a pedal yeah. board. It doesn't make much difference. If you want to try something crazy like put delay in front of everything <laughs> you can do. No, no, it's not a bad sound either. Yeah. And I think it's quite fun to use. I like when you when you see all the pedals like 
mm. here and if you want you can uh, you can put it that, <laughs> that way <laughs> now it's look like tr traditional pedal board but it's quite hard to use your fingers to put everything on so the second preset is just the same but with the tremolo yeah oh okay and these are the mo sounds i i mostly use just uh, Rectifier sound and sometimes with tremolo clean because because I love tremolo and I have one solo in the set and it's the, <laughs> this kind of blues drive. Yeah, it's just with the same amplifiers. There's only Tube Screamer and uh, a different, different comp. Yeah, different. Mm. It's a Dynacomp, I guess. Dynacomp copy. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Uh, one thing we talked before, like, is, apparently there isn't a huge delay between because your amps change when you yeah. hit the foot switch. And well, there is a little bit delay. And when you're using Bluetooth uh, full switch, there's a little bit bigger delay. If you're using the pedals, there's no delay. So the delay only comes from using the amp, different amps. Yeah. Yeah. Well. The, or the different <coughs> presets. Yeah. yeah. Having seen your gig, I didn't notice. Like it's not noticeable to the audience. It, yeah, and there's all. <laughs> there's always a little bit. There's always a little gap with the when I in the songs when I need to change the oh that's true this to this sort of change makes sense yeah so the rectifier sound it's like a, it's not modified from the bias amp mm. session it's only I I've only changed the microphone mm. if you want to see the uh, this is the Sennheiser C four one C if I go to the bias amp. You could see that this is pretty much the the basic uh, stock mark, stock version from the bias amp. Hmm. And if we look this other amp, there's uh, Shure's uh, SM57. It's not that different sound, but uh, it gives you something something more for the left or right channel. Hmm. So actually, a question about that: When you are playing live, like, does your mixing engineer pan your guitar like both left and right? So it's not. It's not panned uh, fully light, light, left and right. Mm. It's something more like uh, center and a little bit right, mm. I guess. I think the most important part with, with the live sound is to have a good connection with your sound engineer. Mm -hmm. And um, this is quite simple sound, but I, I guess he's okay with that. <laughs> he's been happy for now. Yeah, he's been happy for now. So the sound, live sound is, uh, I think it's not so good for recording stuff. Mm -hmm. When I'm recording uh, demos or something, I use a different setup for because it's too muddy and too big, too mm -hmm. bass, too much bass for the recording sound but it's good to have a if you are only guitar player who playing with the rhythm so you need to have a big power chords or big full chords mm. with, and i like to play a lot of uh i don't know what you call bar what chords? chords not bar chords no if you have this power chord and uh, take this one so it's the fifth above the yeah root. That's how it I'm not so kicky if you, <laughs> you see. Like this one. Then you can't have so much distortion in your sound. Mm. If you want to hear all your strings. But yeah, someone who mostly records at home and records in general I play much less live than he does uh, usually you can have a bit more gain when yeah. you're playing live compared when you're recording it's surprising how how little gain you basically can have or should have to get a 
proper clean sound even like the metal records mm. everybody's heard it's surprisingly low gain it's yeah. just played really well that's true because i played at 10, ten <coughs> years in the metal band we have the a seven string tuning mm. on the and uh, <coughs> i learned that it's, it doesn't matter really much which amplifier you have you need to have you need to have as as less gain you can, could ever have <laughs> And play as loud as you ever could. So <laughs> you hit hard on the on the strings and uh, use as little gain as you <laughs> use you, you mm. have courage to use. Mm. So for all the metal zone users, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so the uh, bias FX is um, it's not the best live rig mm. for the modeling uh, amplifier system. I'm sure that if you have a fractal XFX or uh, what campers uh, campers yeah I guess it's much much more uh, better about that if you already have an iPad this is really cheap amplifier system for you mm. because this uh, bias effect system it's cost like uh, 15 euros or something like that bias <laughs> amp is like 10 or 15 it's really cheap and that's uh, I th this duck it's also like 150 euros so, so for, it's quite cheap uh, amplifier system so for less than 200 yeah euros. yeah nice if, if you have a festival concert and you don't have much time this is really good good way we have all the same always the same sound mm. in one box yeah and i think in cases like you with your band not everybody li lives nearby so you could rehearse like many times per week yeah. or anything like that you Basically, it's something that it's easy to grab, grab with you, and just go. Yeah, and it it sounds good. Like there's a thing called good enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, and that's it's, familiar for me. Yeah. <laughs> I play Tokai Tokai guitars. This is my backup uh, guitars. This SG SG is like a two hundred euros guitar also. But and again, it's the it sounds yeah, good. It's good enough. <laughs> it's like me for the guitar player. I'm good enough. For guitar, <laughs> and also you can play <laughs> games with it. Also the same. That's way, true. If you had a boring time with your concerts. Actually, the first time when I heard this bias effects is when when we do a, when it, when we did a single called Alpha Omega mm. with our band. In that single, we only used uh, this bias amp plugins. We used a Mark II uh, model, and uh, mm. it was the stock presets only, and uh, it, nice. was, it was good enough. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds actually really good. <laughs> yeah, it's good enough. Good enough is good enough. Yeah. So then I realized that uh, this could be very useful in live live concerts if you have an iPad. So I bought one <laughs> <laughs> for games and stuff. And uh, then I tried to use it uh, use it in the Garage Band. It works mm. great. And, and specifically Garage Band uh, on the iPad. Yeah, I think yes. Everything is on on the iPad. I don't I don't have any <laughs> any other Apple products. So. Mm. So then I tried to use and then uh, concerts. I borrowed some uh, sound sound card system, mm. and the sound in sound engineer said that it's not bad at all. So mm. then I was tweaking a little bit more, and uh, this is the sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
And the one reason why it's so fun to use because you can all have all these pedals mm. and try try to do it. I've never had a treble booster, but now I have, <laughs> and, and it it's a quite amazing pedal for the lead sound. I think that was a great overview of what you're doing. Thanks for doing this. Uh, there will be a second video. Tanner wanted to challenge me to build up a guitar sound using only this. And it's kind of interesting for me because I'm usually using a one channel amp which doesn't have overdrive and I use like a one pedal, like one overdrive pedal and a reverb. So this should be fun. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for doing this and let's hear some more sounds. Ha, ha, ha.